Let's create this special effect using Photoshop's generative fill and motion tracking in After Effects. Let's dive into it. So we all know by now Photoshop's generative fill is truly incredible and there's more about its capabilities that we learn each day. Not only could you use this tool to enhance and change your environments, I used it to create this steampunk visual effect on this actor's face. I'll show you how. All right, so I'm gonna start out in After Effects where I have my clip of this young woman with kind of a creepy background. And I'm just gonna go to the first frame. I'm gonna go to Composition, Save Frame As, File. I'm gonna click Render. And now I have this open in Photoshop. I'm gonna unlock my layer here and I'm gonna click on Select and Mask. And I'm just gonna select half of her face right here using this selection tool. And I'm gonna hit OK. And then I'm going to go down to my feather selection and I'm just gonna feather it a bit. And I'm gonna click on generative fill and I'm gonna type metal robot face. See what that does. Okay, that doesn't really do much. But I guess today's robots kind of look like humans so I have to change it up a little bit. I'm gonna type in steampunk partial face. Okay, looks kind of cool. All right, we're definitely going in the right direction. Okay, I'm gonna try another prompt here. And I'm gonna type in steampunk face. Okay, I like that a lot. All right, I might just tweak it a little bit. That one's pretty nice too. It's a little bit more subtle. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the first one here. I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit. So I'm gonna hide that bottom layer. All right, I'm gonna take my elliptical marquee tool and I'm just gonna select around her eye. I'm gonna click generative fill and I'm gonna type in metal gear steampunk. And this is because I don't wanna worry about the eye movement here. Okay, there's a couple good options here. Ooh, I like that one a lot. Okay, so we'll go with that. And now I'm gonna tweak my color a little bit. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go to curves and I'm just gonna adjust my curves to try to match the shadows and highlights of her face. Okay, let me just tweak the brightness and contrast overall. Okay, so then once I'm in a good spot, I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna bring this PSD back into After Effects. All right, so I'm gonna import my PSD into After Effects. I'm gonna make sure the import kind is on composition, and I'm gonna click OK. Then I'm gonna drag this onto my comp on top of the video layer. And I'm gonna double click on this composition and I'm just gonna remove, I'm gonna hide this bottom layer here. Then I can come back and edit this, but for now I have to motion track this part of the face. So to do that, I'm gonna go click on my video layer and I'm gonna go to animation, track in Boris FX Mocha and click on the Mocha icon in my effect controls. And it's just gonna automatically pop up. Okay, so then I'm gonna grab up here in my toolbar, I'm gonna grab my X-Spline tool. And I'm just gonna select some portions of her face that are semi-high contrast. So probably corner of her eye, maybe part of her nose, corner of her mouth, and corner of her eye right here. And let go of that mask. And then down here in my essentials panel, I'm going to click on show surface and I'm just gonna click on align surface from here. So it maintains the proportions of the clip. I'm gonna click on my track forward button. Okay, let me fast forward this for you guys. All right, that track looks pretty good. When that's all set, I'm gonna click on my save button and I'm gonna close out of Mocha AE and Going back into After Effects, I'm gonna drop down my tracking data in my effect controls, and I'm gonna click on Create Track Data, and I'm just gonna click OK. And then down here, Layer Export 2, I'm gonna make sure my Layer 1, my top layer is selected, and I'm gonna click on Apply Export. So now, once it does that, I hit Play, and my special effect robot part is moving perfectly with her face movement. I could click on my sub comp and from here I could actually duplicate my steampunk part 
and I could just select this gear and I'll click on my anchor point tool and I'll just move this so it looks like it's rotating on its axis. That looks pretty good. And I'm actually gonna option click on rotation and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do a expression here. I'm just gonna do wiggle and then one comma ten and I'm gonna see how that looks. See it's kind of just randomly make, making movements. If I wanted to make it faster, I could do maybe 10 comma 10. That's a little too fast. Maybe something in between, maybe four comma 10. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I'll make sure I turn on my motion blur. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this outside gear here. And then I'm going to select the inside and I'm gonna do subtract the mask. So if I just solo this layer, that's basically what I'm going for. I could probably change the expansion a little bit right there and feather at about five pixels. And I'll do the same thing. Hit my rotation, option click, and then do another wiggle. Two comma 10. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And I'm gonna make sure I turn on my motion blur here. So now I'm gonna try to blend it in a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to my match grain effect and I'm gonna apply this to my PSD layer. And in my effect controls, I'm gonna just gonna drop down to final output and noise source layer is the bottom layer, which is my video layer. And preview region, I'm gonna move probably like where her hair is here. And now you can see as I play it, you can see the grain is matched from the video source. So it looks like it blends more in with the raw footage. It's still a little bit sharper than I would hope. So, cause when I zoom in, I could see she's a little bit soft and this is more sharp. So I'm just gonna go to camera lens blur and I'm gonna bring this onto that layer Five is a bit much. Yeah, one looks good. And there it is, folks. Thanks for watching. If you want to see some of my other generative fill videos, check them out.